Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gen Sense. Hope you're having an awesome day. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions of a new Mads era that came out this year. It is Melody of the Sun. So I picked this bad boy up from MaxAroma.com. Uh, pro tip, you shop at MaxAroma.com, use the code GENTS10, save yourself 10% off the website. That's what I do. So yeah, I uh, picked it up from MaxAroma.com. This is a two fluid ounce, 60 milliliter size bottle because it's cheaper and it's going to look frankly kind of weird in my collection of all four ounces, but <laughs> whatever. So yeah, like I said, we're going to unbox this, we're going to spray it on, see how it is and uh, see if it's any good. So let's jump into it. The reason that I went for this one is because A, it's a new Mansara, and B, Mansara actually has some really good warm weather fragrances. And that's what this is, a warm weather fragrance. And the expectation or the hope is that it'll be good. So let's go ahead and open it up, spray it on. Let's see. Ooh. So here we have the box. You got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration right there on the front. Eau de Parfum, like I said, two ounce bottle here. Nothing on the top, nothing on the sides. On the back, you have your ingredient information and your barcode. On the bottom, you have your batch code. You open it up and you have this little pouch inside, like always with Mancera fragrances. And then within the pouch is the bottle. Wow, that looks weird. I am too used to the uh, four ounce size bottles. It, it's like a it's like a four ounce bottle that had gastric bypass surgery. That's what it looks like. So you have there on the front the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration. Has a nice gradient gold up top, clear at the bottom. On the bottom of the bottle, you have your badge code. It is 22C075H. And then the little Mancera logo on top of the cap. And the cap is magnetic. Fantastic. So this bottle kind of looks like the instant crush bottle, essentially. Do like the look of it though, real nice. Let's go ahead and spray it on. Let's see how Melody of the Sun is. See if this is any good. See if we can hang with the heavy hitters. Here we go. Ooh, nice pressurized atomizer. Very fresh, a little bit green. It's a, a little tart, maybe slightly less citrusy than I was thinking it was gonna be. I mean, there's citrus here. You can pick the citrus up but it's melding together with these these other notes so it's not really the focal point necessarily yeah it's pretty interesting so you do pick up pear but it, it's kind of underneath everything else so when you smell it at first you get that that bit of green you get that that citrus the little citrus that you can get but then it's like as those notes kind of dissipate and you stop smelling them as much as you take the fragrance in you go ahead and get a little bit of pear that that sneaks in just like a little hint of it a little tinge that comes in there it has some tartness from the current but not overly so and it's not as pronounced as you're going to find in other fragrances maybe fragrances that are aventus ish you know um, oftentimes you'll see bergamot or citrus used with black currant and it ends up giving a kind of an aventus type feeling in the opening. You don't get that here at all, not even one iota. It has a faint soapiness to it, so like this clean kind of feeling, and, and that permeates through the fragrance. It's it's aromatic as well, quite fruity, and uh, really pleasant. I'd say it's, at least in the opening here, firmly unisex. This isn't a fragrance from Mancera that's leaning you know, on the masculine side of things, but by the same token there, it's not leaning over toward the feminine side of things either. So interestingly, I had seen online that this was compared to Oligarch from uh, Raja Parfum. And no, <laughs> I don't get that at all. Something that those people were picking up on that I'm not, I guess, but it, it doesn't come across like that to me at all. Sorry, uh, if you're looking for like a cheaper alternative to that, this would not be your choice. To be fair though, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative uh, to that fragrance, that would be Terre de Mez <laughs> would probably be your best choice. And that'd be cheaper than this one as well. So, hey. So it's this smooth green tea that doesn't really have any astringent qualities to it. Um, it doesn't come across as a hyper natural green tea to me, but that's taking over as being the most prominent thing going on right now. It's like a sweet romanticization of, of green tea maybe. 
Now you've got some florals coming out, some supporting floral notes that are that are kind of shoring everything up. Again, giving it a little bit of that, that soapy feel, that fresh, clean feeling, the jasmine coming through. It's really nice smelling, very pleasant, easy to wear. I would say, you know, a little simple-ish. Like you can pick out these different nuances, you can pick out these different things going on, but it's not a cacophony of changes that are happening as the fragrance dries down. And it is something that to an extent, when you smell it, you're like, oh, okay, I've kind of, you know, smelled things like this before, things of this style. This is like one of those Mancera fragrances that's a really nice addition to the collection, but it's not really one of those fragrances that people are probably going to center their collection around. And by that, I mean Cidre uh, Boise or Instant Crush or some of the other fragrances that are really popular from the house. This is more one of those Manceras that kind of falls into like the next tier down where you smell it and you're like, man, this is really good, easily worn, not offensive at all, but it maybe doesn't have as much of a, a wow factor as some of the other fragrances. That's what I mean. But it smells darn good. It's really, really nice. So I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll actually take that back as I wear this more. It might be one of those fragrances that you can't quite put your finger on it, but you just keep going back to it. You know, one of those. Not because it's necessarily doing anything that's otherworldly or just stomping the competition, but because for some reason it just works for you. That's, I don't know, I'm starting to, starting to like this more against my own better judgment. All right, I'm gonna take off and let it dry down, then I'll come back and wrap this up. So I'll be back in two seconds because of the magic of editing. I'm back. Also, as always with these first impressions, went and had my wife smell it. She really liked it. She agreed that it was unisex and that she could wear it too. She gave it a big thumbs up. Actually, I think she liked it more than I did. So as this thing dries down, it takes on more of a musky kind of feel with remnants from the fruit from the opening and the green tea. The green tea sticks around a lot longer than the fruit does. And again, it is that more kind of sweet take on green tea. You know, it doesn't have very much of that bitter aspect to it. And that's a little bit surprising because mate is one of the uh, base notes. So you might think as it dries down, it's gonna get more and more bitter, maybe more herbaceous, but it really doesn't. You still have that cleanliness from the florals that, that goes down into the dry down. And on the whole, it's just a really wearable, clean, fresh, very slightly aromatic, fruity, sweet scent. Really nice for spring and summer. This to me would be like a perfect summer vacation fragrance. Like one of those scents that I would throw into my bag, you know, take to the beach and wear there. Or really just anything, you know, casually in spring or summertime. Although it would be, I think, office safe as well. It doesn't really <laughs> project as an, an office type scent. And when I say project as an office type scent, I don't mean the actual projection. I just mean the way the fragrance comes across. So yeah, obviously a spring summertime fragrance, it is definitely more of a daytime scent than a nighttime scent. Can't say too much about a performance here because this is the first time I've worn the thing, but wearing it through the day, it has projected well. I can pick it up pretty easily. The staying power seems to be good. So pretty much everything you would expect from Mancera. And earlier when I was first smelling it before I had let the fragrance dry down and before I had reapplied to have my wife smell the opening and all that stuff, I said that it kind of slotted in underneath like the, the heavy, heavy Mancera hitters, the ones that everybody knows the house for, the ones that are most popular that everybody's wearing. You know, I probably still feel that way, I would say, just because it doesn't have as much of an immediate wow factor that some of the other Manceras have that are so popular because as soon as you spray it on, people just know right away like, oh, yeah, that works for me. This one is a little bit more low key, a little bit less ostentatious than some of the other ones, but I absolutely do think this is the type of fragrance that's gonna grow on me more and more as time goes. And I like it a lot right now. So I'd say comfortably, this is a win. This is a good pickup. And it does look like a Mancera bottle that went on a heavy diet. So Melody of the Sun doesn't smell exactly as I was expecting, but it still smells darn good. All right, guys, if you have smelled Melody of the Sun. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. As I said, I will link it below. And if you shop at Max Aroma, Gents10 is the code. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you again another day with another video. See you later.